Welcome back to part three of this tutorial system that's going to put the job system to work in this Pearl and Noise uh, landscape train type thing that we've created with a whole bunch of cubes. What I've currently got ro running here is a 150 by 150 with two layers in it. And you can see it's kind of struggling a little bit. But with these particular settings, let's have a look at how much work it is actually doing. To do that, go into Window and find the Profiler. This is going to show us how much that CPU is grinding away on all of this. Now, we're going to get an overview of everything that's going on, but if you really want to find the process that we're interested in, which is the update that's in our code, you can go down into the list of everything that's running and go inside of your update. So there's an update just there, script run behavior update. Then there's a behavior update. And then inside of that, if we drop it down, we're going to find our Perlin scroller dot update. And so we can see what it's currently doing and it's running about, you know, 10% of the CPU. And you can see it in graph form at the top there. Now I'm just going to run this for a little bit because I want to get this profile and we'll have a screenshot of it so we can compare it against when it's running with the job system. Okay, so we're currently, and if I just click on it and pause it, you'll see that we're, you know, we've got like 22.22 milliseconds um, per frame going on there. Right, so let's now with that, go back into our code and we're going to modify it for the job system. So let me shut that down and we'll just stop playing. Now at the time that I'm creating this video, there's a few setup things that you need to do in order to use the job system. It's not just automatically inside of Unity. First of all, we're going to go edit, project settings, and then you want to go to player. Then over in the inspector, after you've done that, let me just make this a bit bigger. We're going to go down in the other settings section of the first tab and then scroll down to configuration, which has scripting runtime version. In there, you want to click and change that to .NET 4.X equivalent. The moment you do that, Unity is going to want to be restarted and that's fine. Okay, so we just click on restart and it will come back to exactly where we were, but it'll be switched over to .NET 4. So let's save this and I'll be back in a moment. Now that that's reloaded, you'll have to go digging around in the folder of your project. So let me just bring that in. Okay, so here's the folder structure of what you should be looking at if you go into your folder where you've got your assets. And there'll be a packages folder sitting inside of there. You have to open up the manifest JSON file and replace the contents with, let me get the file for you, this here. So put all of this inside of your manifest JSON file and then you just save it. And when you switch back to Unity, it will upload all these new packages for you. Now we're ready to work with the job system. So go back into your code and we will modify it from there. Let's start at the very top with all of the new libraries we need to include. So replace what you've got with this. We have the Unity engine, then we have the Unity collections, unity.jobs and the unity engine.jobs. If you haven't gone through the steps we just did with changing the .NET to version 4 and also updating your manifest, when you put these in, you'll get errors saying that it can't find them and the reason that we just went through all that, that process. So these are the ones that are going to now help us with all this new functionality. The whole point of having a job system is to alleviate the processing that's currently happening in a linear manner, so one thing after the other, to push through multiple things at a time to be processed at exactly the same time, which is the whole point of parallel processing. Currently, you've got a for loop 
which is down well, you've got one here for setting up but the for loop we're most interested in is getting rid of this for loop here which is looping around inside of your update for all of the cubes that exist processing them one after the other okay so as you can imagine it's a slow thing if it's just one after the other especially if you have a computer with multiple cores sitting in it that can do more than one thing at a time so what the job system is going to allow you to do is instead of push through one cube at a time for getting its pearl and height created you can put through 10 20 30 however many you want to set to push through all at once and it will depend on your type of computer and how many cores you've got for it to access at the any one time now I'll get back a little bit to more of the details about this for loop and the replacement of that with the job in a moment but what we're interested in as far as the value we need to set for each cube is its transform position because that's what we're doing inside of that update we're just changing all of the transform positions and mostly it's really just the y value isn't it because we're changing its height and we're doing that over and over again so what we have to have is access to those transforms of the cubes now the job system has to get them in a special format that it can then work with so we can't just give it our array of cubes we need to be giving it the transforms currently the job systems are limited to just a number of different things that it can do but one of them is to loop through a whole bunch of transforms right at the top let's add this underneath our cubes so that we can start putting those things into our code now um, one of these things you'll see I've got an error for because I haven't defined it yet but that's okay first of all we're going to create an array of transforms which will be our cube transforms then you also have besides this array of transforms you have a transform access array and this access array is used by the job system so it's going to take our transforms and put them into a format that we can then run through these jobs and that's going to be called the cube transforms access array we're then going to create the job itself now a job is uh, I guess held in a data structure um, it's a structure it's not a class and you have to define the structure yourself based on whatever you need to be doing at the time that structure is going to be called for us position update job we haven't yet written it and we will create an instance of it called cube job then the job itself whilst you can start it running and send it off to do whatever it needs to do you also need to have a handle on it to stop it if you need to stop it or to also understand when it has stopped if you need to maybe do something after you've done that in this case we don't have any jobs that need to rely on any other jobs but we do need to make sure we destroy anything that we've created this whole job system it's a lot more hands-on as far as memory management and what's going on um, so you don't get away with things as much as you do in just normal C sharp because the job system is all about memory management and making sure that you've created enough memory and then you've used that memory and then you've deallocated that memory as well so these are the things that we're going to need to do that now continuing on after we've created our cubes array here in awake we'll at the same time create our transform it's really important that we populate this transform array and anything that the job's going to use right up front you can't do it inside of the update because then you're constantly doing extra processing over and over again the whole idea about this is you set these cube transforms up in a way that the job system can access it and then you just leave them you don't muck around with it um, because we don't want to be putting values into something processing them and then taking them out again because it kind of um, defeats the purpose of doing all of this in the first place so now in the start underneath where you've got the cubes we're going to add in this code here so we're going to loop again around for cube count and each time we're going to grab the transform on each of our cubes that we created and put the transform itself into the cube transform array after that's been populated 
We'll then use the transform access array, create a new version of that from our cube transforms, which will give us this nice array of transforms all ready to be fed through and processed by the job system. Now let's write our uh, position update job struct. So let's go down. I've put this just above my update. It doesn't matter where you put it, obviously, but uh, it's going to be used in the update. So we'll put it up near here where you'll be able to see the code working together. The, the jobs themselves or the st structures are structures. As I said, they're not classes. So any of the things you see for jobs like the I job parallel four or the I job parallel four transform, they're structures. Uh, so make sure that you've got that clear. And we need to create our own version of one of these in order to then run it the way that we want to run it. So we're going to inherit from, in this case, an I job parallel four transform. If you just want a simple for loop, there is an I job parallel four that you can run around inside of and process stuff. But this is the really special case where we're getting hold of the transforms and moving things around on the screen in parallel. And for me, at least, that's where the real magic of this job system happened. And I don't know if you saw the demo with the boids in it, with all those fish and the swarming, but that's what really like, you know, wow, this is fantastic. Um, and so I was really drawn to this transform object uh, structure, I should say, first or interface. Okay, so this is the structure of it. And this is what you have to create. Inside, you're having to put an execute. Okay, and it's this execute that will become the replacement of the for loop as such. So make sure that you've added this in and then all your code should be nice and uh, comp compilable. It's not going to run and use the job system yet. We'll go ahead and actually pull out our old for loop from the update and put it into our new execute in the next lecture when I explain how the magic happens. Thanks for watching. Please support the development of more superb online learning content by subscribing. And as always, visit holistic3d.com to learn more about awesome games development books and tutorials.